Hello, it's Rod, Lindsay, Danielle and Bernard from The Right Note here. We know it's very hard getting by without us while we're on a little break. So right here is another of the top five albums of 2017 so far. All right, tough choice already. We're only, what, four months into the year and, I and I, my list was probably about 12 strong. So wow. I may even do an honorable mention mm. or two. But number five, I have the Smith Street Band with uh, More Scared of You Than You Are Of Me, which is late contender. It's only been out for a little while. Uh, chock full of typically Australian um, punk rock kind of anthems, but I think the real jewel in the crown uh, are Will Wagner's lyrics on this record. I think he has a real um, poetic sort of stream of consciousness, every man way of expressing things. Uh, and I think it really holds the album up. Uh, at number four, I had Prisoner by Ryan Adams. Um, which I think really kind of carries on the form of his self-titled album, which I enjoyed very much. Um, begins with uh, kind of a, almost a Tom Petty-esque rock song in Do You Still Love Me, which is a little bit misleading because then the rest of the record is quite acoustic and sombre and contemplative um, because I guess it's his heartbreak album after breaking up with Mandy Moore. Number three, uh, Little Fictions by Elbow, which was an album I remember talking about when we uh, reviewed it on the show and how much uh, it would end up in my top ten of the year. So for that fact alone, I had to put it in. Yeah. <laughs> a mind no, word. Yeah, but I do really like it. I was listening to it again today going, I'm, I really back this record because they're not a band that I've loved over the years, mm. but there was something about this one that really spoke to me. Number two, Nadia Reed, <laughs> Preservation. She's made three out of four of our lists. Very um, impressive. Her vocals are just so pure and pristine on this, but I love the fact that the album is full of rage and heartbreak, but her voice never kind mm. of changes from just being so beautiful and, and, and listenable. Um, and The Arrow and The Aim, which is one of the songs in there, is one of my songs of the year. Mm. Uh, and at number one is The Menzingers uh, with After The Party. Oh, it's, the I do, I love this record. <laughs> Again, it's another band who I've kind of been a little bit so-so over the years, but this record has just struck a nerve. Um, Pennsylvanian band, it's their fifth album. They're actually from Scranton, which I believe is where The Office was set. Oh, wow. <laughs> <The Scranton laughs> office. Um, and I've tried to speak about them on the show before and I've done it very inarticulately and I'm probably going to be just as bad now, but it's just this great blue collar rock, very everyman lyrics about love and life and loss and the good and the bad, but just set to really beautifully anthemic songs with melodies which uh, get lodged in your head immediately. So. As of now, that is my record of the year so far. Very rod list. Yeah. No, you're wrong though. Good. You did say that. You did say it perfectly correctly. Just that. <laughs> that is what they are: blue collar, anthemic, but really personal as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they managed to do that thing, which I think the Smith Street Band do also in a yeah. very Australian, very and Australian. slightly more, me like you know, uh, mentally kind of sensitive way. Yeah, and I think the Smith Street Band are a lot more ragged than yeah, than oh the yeah, singers. musically, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Um, are you still playing the men's singers every day? Uh, I'm not playing it every day. Uh, however, I listened to it again today as I was doing this list. I thought, oh, I've got to listen to this some more. Um, I do want to put a few notable, oh, right, here if, we I may, here we if I may take That's a liberty. Show. Um, Who's going to stop you? <laughs> <laughs> Sleep Makes Waves, I thought their album was great. I also thought the XX album was very good. Um, and Danielle, in your list, you had Holy Holy and Polish Club, um, both of whom you want to steal? Just outside of my top five. <laughs> um, really great start to the year for a lot of Australian acts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. I think we have to talk about Nadia. I think we have to say three of us put her on our list. I think she's special. And I also think it says a lot about a show like ours where you get to find an artist like that that maybe you mm -hmm. never would have discovered before. You talk about their music, their whole album. And I feel really like we might be at the ground level of someone special here and mm. I really hope she'll come on our show. Yeah. Yeah. It's something please, like Please Nadia, come on yes. our show. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I you were number six, I promise <laughs> actually this mystery band was, but you were very close to number six. The the that's the thing about listening to a whole album that I think people don't get to do that much anymore. It's true. And it's so, and and sometimes we don't get to do it because of the streaming services that pre releases give us, mm. which are, you know, these sort of uh, watermarked ridiculous streams that sometimes have about five minutes in between every song as it, it sends a little ping back to the server to tell you that you're allowed to listen to the next song. It's hard to listen to albums as a whole, but the reward is worth it because it you get to hear these awesome, uh, yeah, like full concepts that people mm. get to put together, which you don't get from a single. And you stumble across an artist like Nadia, mm. who is an album artist, yes. no doubt about it. Mm. She's not a singles artist. She can write great mm. melodies, but she's an album artist. And uh, yeah, You want to hear the full story. Totally.
Mm. Yeah, mm. I think it was really interesting that we all included her, and we did not talk about it beforehand, which That's is right. also true. We don't talk in between. We <laughs> don't like each other. Just turn away.